Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I hope you're having a great day today. Well, we're gonna tackle a new guitar kit build. It's been a long time since we've done one on the channel, and I think I've found the perfect model for the first time builder. Now, if you guys have never done a kit build before, it really is a fun and educational experience, kind of demystifies what a guitar is and all the parts that kind of come together to make an instrument. So let's open this thing up and see what we got inside. Now, here is a little peek why I think this kit is perfect for somebody who has never done a kit before. And that's because, as you can see, it's got a pre-finished body. And not just, you know, an okay body. This thing looks really beautiful. Let's take a look at it. Check that out. So, you know, this is the part of, you know, any build when I'm doing kits that stresses me out. Getting a good finish on the body so the guitar actually looks beautiful. Because when you're done your kit, you want to be proud of it. You want, you know, it to look good. And not everybody is, you know, gifted in finishing. You know, certainly, you know, not me. So it's a mahogany body, really nice kind of deep finish on the back. And see if the camera will focus here. There we go. A decent little flame on the top too. Very nice kind of burst finish. So I think this is why, you know, this kit will, will appeal to a lot of people. Uh, I'll link to it in the video description below. I forget the actual code, but if you just go to Solo site and, you know, search Les Paul kit, uh, this will come up. All right, so let's unbox the rest of the kit. Next up, let's take a look at the neck. Here we go. Set that aside. Okay, so we've got our little trapezoid inlays there. This is what the headstock on the solo kits look like. Uh, very attractive, nothing weird. I always like that, you know, because it's not, obviously not licensed by Gibson or anything. Uh, they all have to have their own unique headstock shape. And I think this one actually looks quite nice. Pre-drilled for the tuning machines. Got your scarf joint right there and a mahogany neck. Rosewood fingerboard, which is nice on a kit like this. And there's actually some nice you know, if you, if you like some variation in your rosewood, there's lots of nice little uh, grain kind of going on and some decent trapezoid inlays. We've got binding on either side. Check out the heel joint. We've got a little nice contour here. Always a little bit of a problem on a traditional Les Paul. Uh, let's check out the body and see how that matches there. There we go. I haven't actually taken a close look at that, but definitely a contoured joint for the neck there. So upper fret access should actually be quite nice. So I should mention the neck is unfinished. It's just got sort of a rough sealant coat on it. So we will have to sand this down and seal it, which is much less daunting, you know, than trying to do a full burst finish with like a super smooth, shiny <laughs> finish on it and stuff. So this shouldn't be too much of a problem, but I thought I'd mention it here. So in part one, we're gonna do a bunch of prep work. We're gonna work on the neck a bunch. We're gonna put the finish on it. We're gonna polish up the frets, kind of get that ready to go, do some assembly on the body, but we need to make sure that we have all the parts. That's the first thing. There's a little card that comes in the box that says, make sure you have all of the parts. The wiring diagram is available online. So we'll print that off, make sure we have all the, the schematics for that. Okay, so boom, <laughs> giant parts bin. Okay, so we've got four speed knobs. Awesome. Classic look for sure. I think that's going to look awesome with our burst finish. Okay, uh, kind of like a cream guard. So I think this will be optional. I'm not sure if I'm going to put the guard on there or not. If you want the traditional look, you definitely want the guard. Now they have some strings along in the packet too, but I found one of these in mine. <laughs> So there you go, we've got some better strings. I think that is actually really important when you're doing, uh, you know, whether you buy a super cheap guitar or you do a kit build, usually the price on them is about the same. So, you know, doing a kit doesn't always save you money compared to like, you know, those ultra cheap guitars, but it is a great learning experience. And at the end you have something that you can say, I've had my, you know, hands on every single area of this build. So I know the guitar in and out. And of course you learn a lot about doing guitar. So there is some advantage to that. Check this out, love this. So last time I did a Les Paul build from Solo, they didn't have the contoured 
heel joint on these. So that's awesome. And of course, this is a bolt on kit. So, you know, if you're worried about gluing things in, getting the proper tilt angle left and right, and then clamping it down, if that stresses you out, again, I think this is why this is a great, you know, build for somebody who's never done it before. Okay, so let's keep going. So we've got our posts that will go into the body for the tailpiece and uh, two pneumatic bridge. And here is the bridge. I'm not going to open up all those parts. Here is the tailpiece right there. Okay, so that's good. We have all that. They even throw in a cable if you don't have one and a little Allen key for adjustments for uh, the truss rod in the neck. We won't be using that, but it's nice that they throw it in. Okay, so here we go. We've got tuning machines and something else in here. Oh, I see separate, uh, the top part of the tuning machines and the truss rod cover are in there. Okay, so that's good. And then we've got electronics. So back cavity cover, back toggle cover, and of course your pick guard. So these are all, you know, kind of vintage cream-ish. And then we've got our pickups. Now, hopefully the, the three-way selector, oh no, that's in here. Okay, I see that. So these are just your pickups. They come pre-mounted into uh, the surrounds, which is nice. And they've just got kind of two wiring. One will go uh, to your ground and then your other is the hot. So you, we've got two humbuckers. Again, we'll do a tone test, see how those babies sound. See if I can pull the plastic off of that. Always the best part of <laughs> a build is pulling plastic off. Such a nice uh, feeling. So there's a close up of the humbucker. It'll be interesting to see what these sound. Uh, from my recollection from doing a build uh, a couple years ago, they were very warm. So if you like that uh, warm tone, I'm guessing these will be very similar. Uh, strap buttons, that's also nice. Something I always forget when I'm doing like parts caster builds and stuff. Uh, I always forget something. Okay, so here are the electronics. Let's see if I can get them out of the bag here. Okay, yes, here is our three-way toggle. Okay, and of course, when we print off the, the wiring diagrams, we'll know exactly what color wire to connect to what post. That's always very important. And then here, we've got some pre-done wiring, which is nice. Saves, uh, saves people some soldering, so that's nice. Small dime-sized pots. There we go, and color-coded wiring. So very important. Um, we shouldn't have to solder a bunch because this is kind of pre-done. So just basically up to our selector switch and maybe the output jack or is the output jack in here too? Yeah, so maybe just a couple, uh, you know, connections to, to solder, but not like overwhelming. Now, of course, you can start assembling your kit in any order that you want, but I think today let's start by working on the body. So I've gone ahead and downloaded the wiring diagram for this kit. Looks like the yellow wire is the neck pickup. Let's start there. So here we go. Take the plastic off. Awesome. Okay, so we want the adjustable pull pieces to the neck side of the guitar. And that's the nice thing about the Les Paul kit is the channeling for the wiring and the three-way switch and stuff is always, you know, there's tons of room. So you never have to worry about, you know, getting other wires past, uh, you know, ones that you've previously installed. So uh, there we go. Grab our screws and let's mount this baby into the body. So the neck pickup is mounted with our four screws. Let's go do the bridge. Obviously that means we're going to be using the red wire for a bridge pickup and we're going to put the adjustable pull pieces to the back. We'll uh, put our four screws in here to mount that down and we'll be back. Well, with the pickups installed, it already looks a little bit more like a real guitar. For now, we're just having the wiring hanging loose there. You could tape them together if that bothers you. Um, but yeah, there we go. Let's work on the body a little bit more. Let's put in our posts. There we go. Yeah, I think the last kit I did with you guys was the Jazzmaster kit. So Solo's got a bunch of different kits. Um, so if you don't want to do you know, a Les Paul or something like that. They definitely have strats and tellies and stuff like that. But that Jazzmaster build was actually a lot of fun. So there we go. These are drilled very precise. Just needs a little bit of pressure. I have my rubber mount here in case I needed to seat them, but I'm just gonna give them 
a few extra taps here. There we go, and boom, ready for some hardware. Of course, we're not gonna put that on because you need the tension of the strings to hold it all together, otherwise it'll be flopping around. Okay, so now let's put in our pots. And again, you know, we're gonna have to do a little bit of soldering, so we'll put them through and just sort of like loosely tighten them. All right, so I've put the volume pots and the tone pots through. We just need to tighten them up a little bit. We've got our washer and then the nut, so that's the order that goes. And when you're tightening them up, uh, definitely do not over tighten them. You will crack the finish. Um, you know, just make that, make sure that they're, they're firm and they're not, uh, you know, spinning, but don't go too crazy. So all you want to do is just snug them up and then we can install our knobs. Now, when I was running the wiring through, uh, I did notice, and of course I forgot this, there is a ground wire that goes to the post. So I'm going to have to put that through now. So here it is right here. I don't think they really stripped the end enough, so I think I'm just going to get my wire strippers given an extra, I don't know, quarter inch or something like that, just so that, you know, this ground wire makes really good contact with that post. All right, so here's our ground wire. As you guys can see, I've stripped it back just a little bit. I could probably almost do a little bit more because we do want to make sure that that has great contact with the post. So here we go. I'm just going to kind of scooch it to the side so you can see there's just a little nub i don't know if the camera will pick that up but anyway there's just the very end of the wire right there and then when we push down hopefully that will i might need to pull it back a little bit let me grab the wire here there we go just like that And then we can be assured that we'll have a good contact with your ground because even though it is a kit build, you want these pickups to be silent. You don't want, you know, all that horrible buzzing. So let's seat that and we're good to go. So we're pretty much done the prep work on the body. I've taped off the two pickup wires just because there are two red wires. These two are for our pickups. This one goes up to the three-way switch along with the blue and the black. So everything's run pretty much ready to solder. Let's check one thing though. I haven't done a check on the neck to see how that fits in with the body. So let's do that now. That's rather important. So let's just see how this sits in to the neck pocket. There we go. Okay. So there we go. That's what it's going to look like. Looks really good so far. I think this is going to be, um, you know, a pretty good and successful build. So anyway, uh, that's it. That's the prep work for the body. Uh, we can go ahead and solder all that up. Like I said, I've downloaded the schematic, so I'm going to go do that. Um, and then we'll get on and, you know, start finishing and looking at the neck. Okay, now let's move on to the neck. Let's see how this thing shipped. I'm going to check with my straight edge here. Oh man, that is dead straight. So you'll notice there's no gaps between the straight edge and the fingerboard throughout the middle of the neck. Now, obviously, once you put the tension of strings on there, that will change, but yeah, that's dead straight. So that's good for, you know, doing anything, any sort of work you wanna do on the frets or anything, you wanna make sure that your neck is straight. So what we're gonna do is sand some of the coating off uh, in preparation for doing our own. Now, obviously, I'm not gonna do that here because I've got all sorts of, you know, music gear and stuff, but basically, we're just gonna give it a, a nice sanding here um, in preparation for, you know, putting on our coating. So I'll do that out in the garage. So I'm going to do that. Other than that, in terms of the fret work, um, I'm going to use this one and this one. These are little fret polishers. These are from Hosco. This is, uh, I'll take a shot from solo music as well. These things are super handy for just polishing up your frets. So I'm going to start with, no, not the 180. I'm going to start with the 400 here. So there you go. I'm going to start 400 and if I need to, I can go up to the 1000. And all you're going to all I'm going to do is basically just kind of go over there, get rid of some of the grittiness on the top of the fret so that when the string, you know, comes there and you, you know, bend it or you do vibrato, um, it's not gritty at all. And even when you buy, you know, I have a whole playlist and series of, you know, playing and using super affordable guitars. We're talking like 75 bucks to 300 bucks. Um, these things come in super handy for, you know, getting rid of grittiness on frets there too. So you can just kind of go back and forth over the front face of the fret. You don't want to go too hard so that you're, you know, flattening it off, but just kind of 
until you can feel there's no grittiness. So I'm gonna do that over all the frets. And I noticed there's some, I don't know if there's some stain bleeding over onto the binding. Let's see, can you guys see that? So I'm gonna also use those fret erasers um, to kind of clean up some of that as well. So there you go, you can see some of that. I don't know what that is, stain or coating, but I'd like a nice clean line for my binding. So I'm gonna also use the fret erasers for those. Next up, I'm gonna dress my fret ends. Now this is my favorite tool all time for anything related to guitar to the point where I just leave a link to it in every single video. So if you're interested in this kind of work, uh, this Hosco is just absolutely amazing. Now we've shined up the front face so it shouldn't be gritty when we're bending, sliding, uh, vibrato, all that stuff is great, you know, just with these little fret erasers and stuff. Uh, they work really great. Now this, uh, we don't need to crown anything. Everything looks really nice, um, but I'm kind of a stickler for my fret ends. So what we're going to do is use the little concave section here, and it's got safe edges on either side. I don't know if you guys can see that. So completely safe. It won't eat into your binding or your fingerboard. It's just going to grab the end of the fret. And we're just gonna give like four or five little passes here, keeping the same angle each time, and then move on to the next fret. And that's it. And you'll notice when you run your finger, you know, to either side of that fret, how smooth it becomes. And then after we do that, you know, you can take some thousand grit sandpaper, or whatever, polish up the ends. Uh, I, since I have these fret erasers, I'll probably just give it a little, you know, downturn like that. And that's probably going to be all the polishing we need. I'll take a closer look, but that's the next step. I'm just going to take that file, do each one of the fret ends at the same angle, all the way up and down both sides, and then polish it up with uh, one of these, or you guys can use steel wool, sandpaper, anything like that. And we're going to get a neck that plays amazing. Now, of course, you don't have to do any of the fret work. It just makes the playing experience a little bit smoother. And uh, since I have the tools, that's a no brainer for me. And I do buy a lot of low end guitars uh, for the channel. And so I make good use of all these tools. I think I'm going to take my thousand grit uh, sandpaper and just kind of polish up the fret ends a little bit more just to get them that perfect sheen. Uh, if you want to do this, just make sure you keep it the same angle as the existing fret ends because sandpaper, even a thousand grit, you can actually take down the frets. So don't come too much on top but just take the same angle as the frets span a few so it you know keeps you on track and just kind of go back and forth and polish them up and there are a few spots on the binding here that i could clean up yet as well so we're getting close um, and that's really the process i'm going to use to get this playing you know like a high dollar neck and that's the thing you know on these these kits and low-end guitars People just don't have the time because margins are so thin. Uh, but if you, you know, spend a few bucks on some just basic tools, you can get all your guitars in your entire collection just playing like a dream. Because all, all it comes down to is, you know, having the time to do it. So there you go. That's that. Let's move on to finishing the back of the neck. All right, so I've just finished sanding the back of the neck and the headstock. Now the ceiling coat that's on the mahogany is quite rough, so you're gonna wanna sand it off before you put any other finish on. So it's now super smooth. I wish I could just leave it like this, but you know, if you ever have, you know, humidity changes and stuff like that, you should have some sort of, uh, you know, finishing coat on there. So I'm gonna use the Watco Wipe on Poly. This is super easy. Uh, there's probably other brands, but this is the Wipe on Poly. So all you have to do is literally put it on a clean rag, wipe it on, wait four hours, sand it down, wipe it on, wait four hours, sand it down. They recommend three coats. So we'll see how it goes. Let's do the first coat together. So here we go, let's put on the first coat. So I've just got a clean rag. I'm just gonna put a little bit on here. And that's literally it. You don't have to paint it on, brush it on. Just a really light coat. And you'll probably notice how it's glossing up already. Let's put a little bit more on. And the key, yeah, is just to make sure it goes on really light and doing multiple coats, which does take some time and patience, but I think it'll be well worth it. And then if you do get some on the binding here, that can always be sanded off or just buffed off. Not a big deal. All right, let's go ahead and do the headstock. So that's why I like this little wipe on poly. No brushing, no, you know, crazy tools that you need. You know, anybody can just do this, you know, right at home. So love that. 
And that's really all there is to it. Just a little wipe down, just so that you can see every area is nice and shiny. Wait four hours, sand it, you know, because the grain will stand up after, after this dries and then just do a few coats. And that's, you know, that's the process. So anyway, I'll finish this up over the weekend. Uh, in part two, we'll put the whole thing together, test out a bunch of tones, should be a lot of fun. Thanks so much for following along and joining me for part one of our Les Paul kit build. Join me next time. We're going to put this whole thing together, test out some tones, maybe even test it up against like a really expensive Gibson Les Paul. So that should be a lot of fun. Join me then. Until then, have a great weekend.